All right, questions for Brandon Kennedy. Please hit the raise your hand function and we'll call on you and please keep your um, line muted. We'll start with Jimmy Himes. Uh, Brandon, talk a little bit about uh, the offensive line. I know you got hit pretty hard by the virus. Do you think you've been able to build chemistry on the offensive line? And what are your expectations of the line this season? Yeah, so starting off, I think we've been really good at building chemistry. You know, the thing about COVID, it's allowed us to get some different guys at different positions this, um, this uh, year. So I think it's been great. And, you know, our expectations going to the first game is we want to be physical up front. You know, we want to make a name for ourselves by being, you know, with our physicality. So that's kind of what we pride ourselves on as offensive line. We'll go to Gustavo, followed by Teresa Walker. Now, you're a senior in, you know, and also, you know, the season starting Saturday. How are your expectations? You know, how happy are you to play on Saturday? And have you been talking to your classmates, to, your, you know, people at UT about this excitement for the Saturday game? Yeah, you know, me going into this season, I'm very excited. You know, it's my last season. I worked very hard to get uh, to this point. So, you know, I'm just excited and ready to get out there. And, you know, as far as talking to people um, from the outside about playing, you know, my mom, you know, she's very excited for me. You know, she's been here throughout the whole process and just seeing me get th uh, this far, she's very happy. You know, all my friends have been talking to me about it and they're all just excited and, you know, ready to see some football on Saturday. Teresa? Brandon, about that opening on the road, does that make it maybe a little easier considering that it's going to be, it's a different season to begin with, with the limited number of fans going on the road to South Carolina, make that a little easier maybe? I mean, yeah, I think it'll be easier, you know, without the fans. So we'll have that external factor not there, but I mean, I'm sure they'll have maybe crowd noise or something that we'll have to adjust to. So we've been uh, planning for that in practice and I think we've done a good job at, you know, kind of getting those things right. We'll go to Brent Hubs, followed by Trey Wallace. Brendan, if I heard you right, I think you told Jimmy that with all of the the guys that have been out during the preseason, it, it's actually helped you guys in some ways with some of your chemistry because you've worked different guys in different spots. Why do you think this group has better chemistry when most people say you need to settle in on your on who your five are to develop that kind of chemistry? You know, I think we have better chemistry now because, you know, throughout this whole fall camp, we've allowed some guys that maybe wouldn't get certain opportunities. They, they've got more opportunities and they've been able to learn and kind of grow. And also some of the young guys, they've been able to get more opportunities. And it's just this whole um, pandemic has allowed them to kind of come along. And we feel great going into the first game about, you know, who we'll have out there. Trey? Brandon, how has your relationship built with Jared Garantano over the last year heading into this, uh, you guys both last season? So what, what's the relationship been like? How much work have you guys been able to put in outside and off the field? Yeah, me and Jared, we have a great relationship. You know, we watch a lot of film and we talk about things other than football. So, you know, I think we built a great relationship and it kind of boosted over the off season. Uh, you know, we're always trying to watch film and, you know, talk about how each other, how we think. So I think that'll be good and very helpful through us going through the season. We'll go to Rick Russo, followed by Blake Topmeyer. Hey, Brandon, what can you tell us about that South Carolina defense that you'll be facing on Saturday night? Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, much of he has a good defense. You know, they're pretty good up front. They have some uh, younger guys that will be stepping into uh, kind of a newer role uh, of starting. And then on the back end, I think they're pretty, uh, they're pretty good and have a solid secondary. And I also think, you know, linebackers are pretty good as well. Hey, Brandon. Um, you know, obviously you guys finished last season really strong. The, the start of the season was more of a struggle. Have you guys um, had any conversations about that and, and uh, thought about, you know, what you can do to make sure you avoid, um, you know, that from, from happening again in, in terms of the way the season started? Yeah, well, one of the things that we've really harped on is a team that makes the fewest mistakes will win. So that's kind of what we've been harping on this whole time is just trying to play clean football and, you know, penalty free and the things like that. And I think if we do that, we put ourselves in a good position to be able to be successful on Saturday. We'll go to Vince Ferrar, followed by Patrick Brown. 
Brandon, talk about some of the, the battles you've had in practice with your teammates on the defensive line. Any any memorable one on one matchups, guys giving you, you know, the toughest battle. Talk about what you've seen from that group opposite you on the Tennessee D line. Yeah, well, I think the defensive line done a pretty good job, but you know, some of the guys I go against I gotta give credit to, such as Elijah Simmons and uh you know, um, Karat Garland, I think those guys have done a great job. You know, they're very explosive coming out their hips. And, I, and they've grown over the uh, course of the offseason as far as becoming more knowledgeable of the defense. So I feel like that there are two pretty good guys on the defensive line at the nose position. Hey, Brandon, uh, the expectations for the, the offensive line, I think, are, are pretty high going into this season, maybe externally. What, what, are, what are the expectations for, for you guys? What do you guys want to accomplish, and how much do you guys as a group talk about uh, what you guys want to accomplish and how you guys want to be a strength of the team this year? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, our, co our offensive line coach, you know, Coach Friend always tells us we want to set the tone. So I think if we set the tone for the team, we can be very successful. But, you know, we want to be able to win our, uh, win our box. So, you know, us five guys, we have a job every play. And that's kind of what the goal we set is going to um, in the game. We want to win every play and dominate our box. So that's kind of the two things that we focus on as offensive line. Back to Jimmy Himes, then David Pascal. Hey, Brandon. Um, last year, Trey Smith really wasn't able to practice. I think he had like one padded practice uh, before the bowl game. But he's been practicing more. Do you see uh, an improved Trey Smith on the offensive line because he has been able to practice? Yeah, you know, I think he, he's grown to be more comfortable with the amount of time that he's able to practice. And, you know, also when he isn't able to practice, you know, we have other guys that are able to uh, come along as some of the uh, younger guys or maybe older guys get a chance. But, yeah, I, th I think he's, you know, more comfortable and he's growing a very good player. Hey, Brandon, uh, was there a time where, I mean, it's Tuesday of game week. Was there a time that you didn't think this would be happening? I mean, did you have some doubts that you would even get to this point with the COVID? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, being honest with you, sitting back in April, you know, we didn't, we didn't know what would happen, you know, as, as a team. And also, you know, me as a person, just, you know, we were just kind of concerned and there was a lot of uncertainty. But, you know, now that we've been able to go through the summer and kind of gotten a deal on the COVID and know what to expect and kind of, you know, the medical professionals are giving us advice on, you know, how to, how to uh, attack this COVID. I think we've done a great job, and I'm kind of excited now that we've got to this point. And as a quick follow, even when y'all had the 44 players out, I mean, was there still some hesitation, or did you feel more confident by that point because y'all were kind of just working through it and living through it, the ups and the downs? You know, it was kind of tough at first, but, you know, like I said earlier, you know, with us, you know, people were able to kind of grow and, you know, if, if someone was out, we were able to have someone else step up. And I think that kind of allowed guys to grow and become more comfortable with playing and learning all the plays and fundamentals and things like that. We'll go to Ben and then back to Trey. Hey, Brandon, you were asked about JG earlier. Was curious as to, to what you've seen from JT Shrout this fall camp and the progression that he has made from last year. Yeah, I mean, I think he's uh, making good strides, you know, as a quarterback. I think as far as his, uh, you know, mental process, and I think that's kind of rolls over the offseason. You know, all the quarterbacks, they've been able to, you know, get with uh, Coach Winky, and they've kind of grown as far as uh, the, the quarterback group. Trey? Brandon, what, what it's, your whole college football career, you know, this would be your last season. What's it been like to represent Wetumpka and, and also be able to – Make a uh, make an impact on what you're doing in the community as well as just on the football field. You know, I think I'm blessed to have this opportunity. And you know, anytime I get to you know talk to people back at home, I just always give them advice or anything that they may need. You know, I always try to give back, and I, and I feel like that's one of the things for me. You know, being an older guy, as far as giving back to my hometown and giving back to you know some of the younger guys on the team, just being able to bring them along, and I think that's kind of you know my role as a senior here and, you know, I'm very excited to do it. We'll go to Brent Hubbs and then to David Ubbin. Brandon, as a veteran guy, what do you see out of Javante Spragans as a freshman that, that, that you like or, or, or maybe what's impressed you about him uh, with the opportunities he's gotten during fall camp? Yeah, well, you know, as a freshman, he's got, you know, a, a lot of reps, you know, with the, um, with the offensive line. And the one thing I see out of him is uh, he's very, he's very aggressive and he plays hard. And, you know, as offensive line, that's kind of one of the things that really sticks out and people see is when you play hard, it shows up on film. So that's kind of one of the things that I see from uh, 
Devontae is bragging. David. Uh, Brandon, when, when you look at this line right now and you look at uh, where it was in January, what's what's the biggest difference? I think the biggest difference is uh, pro- probably the fundamentals. I mean, I think we got a, a way better grasp um, of, w- of what we're doing as far as, um, you know, maybe the plays and the calls and things like that. I think we got a way better grasp of that as opposed to January and now. So I think that's the biggest thing. All right, time for a couple more. We'll go to Eric K and then close with Jimmy Himes. Hey, Brandon, I know the uh, the live reps might be few and far between during camp, but when you have gone up against Jeremy Banks, Calveras Crouch at inside linebacker, what have you seen from those guys and how have they gotten better over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, those two guys, they're very, they're very physical. So that's the one thing, I, um, that's the one thing I'll say about them. And then also I think as far as, you know, them being able to see formations and being able to kind of recognize things before they happen, I think, that's kind of the things that those two are growing in, and I think they've gotten way better in. Jimmy? Brandon, you said this is your last year, but this year doesn't really count. So I was just wondering, is there a chance you might set a college record by being a seventh-year player next year? <laughs> you know, right now I'm kind of focusing on this season. You know, it really wasn't in the plan, but, you know, whatever happens after after this season is kind of up, up to chance. So I'm just kind of taking it day by day as far as this sixth year that I have. And, you know, if it may happen in the future, it may. But as of right now, I'm not really sure. All right. Thanks, Brandon.